Welcome to all, and let's get right into this hotly contested U.S. Senate race, where we saw some numbers this week. It's being watched around the country. It's being invested in from around the country as well. Uh, Philip, the fundraising for the two partisan candidates shattered records, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, you had Alison Lundigan Grimes, who I think not only did she break a Kentucky record as far as fundraising with $4 million, but I believe more than any U.S. Senate candidate running currently, she shattered those numbers as well. Mitch McConnell raised about $3.1 million. So here you have the Grimes campaign, the notorious Mitch McConnell campaign with knowing to raise money. She essentially crushed those numbers in this, in this re recent fundraising total. So I think that was a surprise for a lot of Democrats. But that sort of was the indication of maybe that's why Elizabeth Warren came to Kentucky for those fundraising purposes. To try to uh, get those numbers high uh, there toward the end. Uh, do you uh, think, Nick, that uh, the, the Grimes campaign attempted to make a lot of uh, hay with this or did they just let those numbers stand on their own? Absolutely. I, I think that once they first got out there, they kind of let them speak for themselves. But once the, <coughs> the positive press started rolling, then they certainly, you know, jumped on that and, and wanted to make sure everybody got to hear about just how, how high the numbers were and they wanted to reinforce that, that you know, these are relatively small donations is the uh, the argument that they were making. Uh, that Look, we've, we've reached this mass number of, of people and that we've got some momentum moving into the, the, the final months in this campaign and, and, and look what we're doing was kind of kind of their, their message. You know, I, I think all that's true, but uh, it should be noted that McConnell's been raising money for five years right. and got the low-hanging fruit uh, long ago and is still plugging away. And, and has more money on hand to spend. Has, yeah, it has much more, more money. Yes. What is it about? The, well, right now what it is for the McConnell campaign is $9.8 million. What's interesting though is that Grimes has caught up considerably with 6.2. Now, the McConnell people will say, the final months of this campaign, it matters who has more cash on hand. At the same time, you can't overlook the fact, like you said, mm -hmm. if Mitch McConnell's been raising money for five years, and Grimes has only been in the race for one year, and she's already caught up this much, I mean, that, I think that gives a lot of credibility to the Grimes campaign. But he's Not hit, locally, he's but hit a national. record here, though, too, hasn't he? I mean, yeah. the, the total raised in this in this cycle is what, like twenty-five well, million, something like that. One, I mean, one, one point to, to point out is, uh, I saw Grimes's. Re these are based on press releases that the campaigns have put out. Now they don't lie about the totals here because they're going to get busted if they do, <laughs> yeah. and they know that. Uh, but uh, the, the detail is, is not been posted as of yet. And it's not because he's delinquent or anything for a McConnell report. It was just today that the Grimes report uh, was posted uh, on the FEC website, and it's 3,656 pages long, so mm -hmm. if you don't have anything, uh, <laughs> but we begin you're having to get trouble a, falling asleep. Right, but we right. begin to get an idea of where the money uh, is coming from when we take a look at, at those uh, at those documents, right? Uh, sure, sure, but, but it takes a long time. Yeah. It's even hard to analyze this uh, by downloading uh, yeah. the contributions because right. it's so complicated. So we've established more than $7 million raised <clears throat> in one quarter by the partisan candidates, and of course they will spend most of their money talking about the other uh, candidate, <laughs> and then maybe say something positive about themselves toward the end, or that is, if it follows form, that's the way it has been uh, in recent uh, campaigns. However, Tom, uh, there will be a lot of money spent by uh, groups, PACs, super PACs, and uh, those totals are coming in as well, and you've there, been looking there, there's at There's a lot of outside money, and uh, where it comes from in all cases is not necessarily known. now. Two cases where it is known are in two super PACs that are dedicated not to many candidates, but essentially to benefit one candidate. The super PAC, which uh, must be operating independently of the campaign it supports. Uh, the one supporting Senator McConnell is Kentuckians for Strong Leadership. Uh, in the past, uh, a quarter raised, actually it was only for uh, May and June, uh, raised uh, $423,000, uh, all of it from out of state, sort of, uh, uh, which says something about the name of the PAC, Kentuckians for Strong Leadership. These were uh, money came mostly from Texas, Florida, New York, et cetera, Missouri. Uh, uh, by the same token, there's a smaller super PAC called We Are Kentucky, which similarly is not mostly Kentuckians. Uh, but a higher percentage than, than in the McConnell Super PAC. We Are Kentucky is a super PAC supporting Allison Lundergan Grimes's campaign. Uh, it reported raising only uh, $50,000 uh, during this two-month period, 
And uh, to date, since they've, they've both been in effect uh, for about a year, uh, the Grimes, uh, uh, the Pro Grimes Super PAC has raised about $343,000. Uh, the McConnell Super PAC has raised uh, 10 times that, uh, more than t uh, about $3.7 <coughs> million. The interesting thing about this, the reason these Super PACs form is that unlike the campaigns, which I think are limited to taking contributions of $5,200, uh, if Bill Bryant I believe that's correct, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, There's a limit. Uh, they can accept unlimited contributions. And particularly in the McConnell Super PAC, they've taken multiple uh, six, very few people add up to that $3.7 million. Well, if we remember, I mean, Mitch McConnell is the architect of you know, the idea of unlimited amounts of money. I mean, he's the one who has said money is free speech. What's interesting, when you look at the two different PACs, we are Kentucky a more pro-union PAC. The, the Republican-leaning PAC, much better at raising money. And this is sort of the fear that Democrats had with Citizens United and the McCutcheon case, which is that... Republican PACs are much better at raising money, tapping into wealthier donors, people like Sam Fox of the Harbor Group, who gave $100,000 $100, just in one, 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 one drop. Yeah. And then you have these smaller sort of Democratic PACs that aren't able to raise that amount of money as quickly as possible. And, and, and make and up for with the Warren. Yeah, with, and then you're, you're trying to make <laughs> up for it the, with those traditional campaigns. But the point is, is that when you look at the McConnell leading super PAC, you're seeing chairman CEOs of major companies putting in, I think one individual is given two hundred ninety thousand dollars. Two hundred ninety thousand yeah. dollars, John W. Childs of the Childs Group, uh, yeah, which is based in Boston and is financial. So services. one individual has almost given more money to <clears throat> Kentucky's for strong leadership that we are Kentucky has raised in total. Let's talk a just a little bit thematically about where this U.S. Senate campaign goes from here. Is it is it going to be uh, coal and health care uh, as we head toward November? certainly seems that way, doesn't it? I think ultimately <laughs> this race is going to come down to both sides chest thumping about who's more Kentuckian than the other. And, and sometimes it gets into these really petty arguments of who's gone into the coal mine, who shoots a gun better, who holds up a gun. Uh, you know, it, it's gotten to the point now, I think the Grimes campaign put out a web ad about Cloverlick. You know, we've gotten down to the point now where we're contesting each other over is Cloverlick real, is it not real? A large part of this is a lot of is, is cultural theatrics, but that's why we need to have a debate to get to some of the meat issues instead of this antics. Well, that's been hard to work out, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Very so. well, and you've got McConnell that relates to uh, a TV ad today that's all about coal. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Well,